Hello everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hi James, you want to see my Rainbow of Darkness? I am going to say no and very slowly walk out of the room and close the door behind me. And awesome brony reviewer Silverquill. I also have a Rainbow of Darkness. Hey, yay, yay, yay. Hey, yay, yay. I said hey, let's conquer the world. <laughs> Ah. I suddenly feel very conflicted <laughs> everywhere. Uh, and in case you didn't guess it by the title, and we're talking about Rainbows of Darkness, we are going to be reviewing the Finship is Magic issue number two, starring Lord Tyrek. Written by Christina Rice, with art by Tony Flix and colors by Heather Breckel. Now, this is, uh, as you can imagine, uh, the story of Tyrek and how he became Lord Tyrek of ah, evil. And it's very much an origin story. What did you guys think about this one issue in particular? I mean, coming right after the King Sombra one, what are your impressions on this one? And, like always, in birth alphabetical order. Here's the story of a centaur named Tyrek who was thinking of conquering all the world. And that's as far as I got. But, uh, <laughs> that's really all there is to the comic. This one, we, we, we lamented that the King Sombra comic was only one issue and that the ideas put forth might stay in sort of a limbo or purgatory for the remainder of the IDW comics, maybe. Uh, this one, good lord, this is not a story. This is part one of a story. And it just stops. You get, well, it's an interesting thing. With King Sombra, it was equal parts the question of did he cho- is this the result of his choice? Is this the result of his destiny? Is there could he have had a different life? This one is this comic basically says, yeah, Tyrek was born this way. I'm not gonna break into Lady Gaga. I think I've exhausted my song quotient. <laughs> but, if you keep singing, I'm gonna have to call Josh Whedon so he can direct you. <laughs> oh no. Josh Whedon would, would probably want to wipe out the brony fandom if he heard me singing. <laughs> uh, but basically, this comic just says, oh, he was always a little damaged. He was this rebel without a clue. <laughs> and the, really, the true fascination for me is Scorpan, who is just a minor character in this. But that, that, more on that later. But that's basically, I just read this like, okay, that was kind of interesting. I, I guess some are more inclined towards villainy without... Being the offspring of freaky red crystals, yes, I'm still <laughs> hung up on that. Uh, but it's like he's just that way because. <laughs> no, don't, don't tell Tony just because. Because is boring. Why is it boring? Just because. <laughs> uh, true that. True that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, at first when I thought about this issue, I thought about wow, we get to see T Rex backstory, like. I heard a little about the comic book, no, the first generation, and wow, how is it going to be there? And when I take a look at this, like, wow, the art is awesome. And when I read through, it's like, what? (laughs) What is this? Why am I looking at some angsty teen emo guy who is not happy with what he's got? Like, ah, this is not what I want. (laughs) This is not the Lord T-Rex that I fear and loathe. This is just some angsty emo guy who's not appreciative. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I'm gonna break my song uh my song taboo. Crawl in my fat locks! These words they will not hear Yep. I don't know about the troll. It's basically this, it's basically this. Why does this happen to me? How could this happen to me? Yep. <laughs> I learned my mistakes. Oh, now you have me having it too. Have me doing it too. Damn it. Yay. Uh, you see, this is, we're going to start like the world's worst acapella group. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's really, I guess I know where you guys are coming from is that the way that they portray Tyrek in here is like Tyrek the teenage years. <laughs> uh, he's very much a teenager. The attitude, the way that he behaves, the way that he interacts with his parents. And, uh, the way that he's carrying around his little brother, uh, Scorpan and all that. So, um, I'm sorry, were you done with your, uh, with your first impressions? Norman, I'm done, or? I'm done, I'm done. It's like, there's nothing more I could say. It's just annoying. I like the, I like the, I like the, the way that they approach this because it's very, uh, unusual. 
We never actually focus on when the, the 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 badness, the evilness of the character comes in. Like you never you never know if it's um it's something of the adulthood or if they were born that way or something like that. But the whole obsession of Tyrek trying to gather more power for himself uh, comes on the teenage years, which is I'm not sure if it's the best idea because when you think about it, it kind of portrays Lord Tyrek as a kind of like a more of a despondent. Uh, 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 overlord, tyrannic overlord, and I don't think that will be that is that is something that works in the favor of the comic or the TV show. If anything, I think that this comic does a disservice to the show in particular, because I mean you have this one guy that is the first callback to to Generation One, probably the most intimidating villain that the cartoon had, and they waste him in. In a very unfair manner. It's mm-hmm. kind of sad because Tony Flick's artwork is just wonderful. I love the way that he, that every character is drawn in this comic, by the way. That is my absolute favorite part, the character design. But the writing is just so dry. And it's kind of a, it's kind of like impersonal. It gets to the point where I cannot tell individual characters from each other. They don't have quirks. They don't, they don't have any of that. The only one characters that I can tell from each other are, uh, Scorpion. And, and T-Rex parents. But everyone else sounds exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, when, when I, when I give my first impression, it, it doesn't mean that I hate it. I just find the story annoying. But overall, like, when I take a look, see at how the story flows, it's not bad. I, I do like the issues that it presents the reader and what they're trying to tell. But in the end, it turns T-Rex into a very whiny teenage character with a lot of angst. He wants power. Why does he want the power? Do they mention it at all? The motivation for him to have power is just because... I don't know. You Guys, save me if you can. Like no, The way that he's acting is that he's basically, oh, I'm acting this way because I want to stick it out to my daddy. <laughs> I want to fight against the system. Yeah. Well, bo- both both... Tyrex's mentor and his father comment that he has a thirst for power, that he that he has ambition, and sometimes you know there's the argument of nature versus nurture. Are, do are the qualities in us when we're born, or do we acquire them from our environment? Is it a combination? So there's the argument that Tyrex is ambitious, but you could be ambitious and still work for the good of the community, or perhaps for select few friends. We are never given a reason why Tyrek wants it all for himself. What closed him off to the rest of the world? And like you say, it, it does come down to, Daddy never hugged me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's, it, that's my point here, because with Sombra, in the previous issue, we said that his motivations were nobody really cared for him. That's why he turned evil. If he had a better choice, better opinion, he had turn well he had considered turning good but no just no this one like what was your motivation here again more power uh, but let's not dilly dally well there is not actually need to dilly dally because uh i mean you know how in the in the sombra comic uh, we're, uh, we're going to be comparing it with the sombra comic i know it's going to be unfair but sh- shut up okay we know what we're doing because <laughs> In the, in the summer comic, there was a lot of implications. There were a lot of like subvert, subvert themes that you could get, uh, you could get uh, out of the comic because of the way that it was written and the way the characters were presented and the way that you are, that, that you are given all of this. Here, they basically give you the colors. They give you the numbers to which each color uh, represents and they say, this is a color by number story. Please fill in the colors to understand the themes. Hmm. And that's what you're getting is like, oh, Tyrek, I am evil and I want power. So, okay, Tyrek is evil and wants power. And I have a mentor that is uh, a guy that is not respected by anybody and he lives outside on a, on a cave in the middle of nowhere and he lives and, uh, okay, you got it. All right. So there is all of these archetypes that when you have archetypes, you can use them for Either telling a, telling a story and telling a cautionary tale and give people an idea of what the, 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 the tone that you're going with. Or in this case, 
you just want to move the plot forwards. No implications with My Little Pony plot. I mean, plot in the story, plot. And that's the problem with this. It feels like every single dialogue is just moving the story without caring to fleshing out the characters. By the end of this comic, I don't know more about Scorpion, I don't know more about Tyrek, I don't know more about his parents, and I don't know more about this other guy. Uh, what's the name of the magician guy? Sendak. 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 Yeah. So well, that's that's the thing is that you know so little about the characters that they don't even care to introduce them to you right away. You have to find the names of the characters so you can care for them. That's right. But in the meantime, we just focus on the plot. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. No, no, no spring effect for him. Hmm. Yeah. Honestly speaking, I'm more interested in, uh, Tarek's brother, Scorpan, because Scorpan has been an awesome brother. He's been with him by his side. He's supportive and really cares for him. Makes, makes a really huge contrast when you compare the both of them. I don't know. Scorpan is definitely more likable, but he's also something of a, of a mama's boy. Well, uh, true, I true, but... actually kind of like that. Uh, but then again, we're being a bit unfair. I mean, the the way that the comic... Rec- actually, you know, that's also a part of the comic that I really like a lot. The um, uh, T-Rex and Scorpion's parents. I like how they are presented in a very equal matter, ma- manner. Like, uh, okay, we're kind of like jumping all over the place on yeah. this comic. We're not actually following the story, but let's just talk about, let's just talk about, uh, the parents for a moment, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I- if you see that the way that they are drawn, I'm, I'm gonna call them by their names, alright? I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, the mother or the father. No, just let me call them properly. Let me just find the name of the mother that is said right at the end of the comic. But okay, I, I have to say one more thing. How we complain about this comic, it does bring up the implication of, world that it's outside the borders or this is in the badlands and Equestria is just by the side fluttering with ponies and whatnot and this badlands doesn't and they have to have a political agreement and play nice or if not there's war that's kind of cool well okay so the uh... You know what? Let's just go ahead and and start start talking about the comic from beginning to end mm-hmm. because we are already spreading out spreading ourselves all over the place and jumping left and right. So let's <laughs> just <on>. let's <laughs> let's just let's just do this and not uh, not uh, worry about uh, the themes of it because this is a very basic, very very by the by the book story. Okay. All right. Okay. So um. So we see Tarek and Tarek and Scorpan walking down the desert as they go meet, or at least Tarek goes meet with his, uh, uh, with his master, or with the with the guy that lives that lives in the middle of nowhere, just isolated from everyone else. And in a skull cave. <laughs> in a skull cave. Yeah. I'm well, not a bad guy. Look at this skull cave. Would a bad yeah, guy live here? I'm not evil. Whatever gave you that idea? They say it was all the rage. Yeah, it's very inconspicuous the way that the cave is built and put together, isn't it? Yeah. Like, like who, who the hell built this? Hydra? Uh, Cobra? I think it was Cobra. I think someone that did Castle Grayskull. <laughs> evil overlord lives here. Step away, don't step on the grass. There is no grass. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> But, yeah, as uh, as we see, he's kind of, like, affecting the same magic that Tyrek was doing at the end of season, f- uh, at the end of season four. Because he seems to be extracting the essence out of something or somebody. I mean, we right. never know what is in this, inside that cage. I could make so many innuendo jokes right now, it's so tempting. <laughs> oh, dear. There may be children! <laughs> oh, the children! Oh, there may be children listening! But, yeah, the next pages are just focused on uh, S- Sendak and T- uh, is it Sendak the name of the uh-huh. yeah it's yeah. between Sendak and Tyrek just basically summarize or I'm I'm powerful yes you are you have the potential yes I do I'm going to be stronger than you no way <laughs> <laughs> way no way it's a way oh god no and that's where we learn that Sendak has actually managed to kidnap a unicorn and it is a very weird interesting looking unicorn and I actually went online to check, and there has to—I think I have seen one 
that looks very, this one looks very similar to one of the generation one toys. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, this comic is mostly hailed for all the G1 references. Uh, T-Rex is dressed as the, his older version was in generation one. Uh, the pouch around his neck is the dark rainbow pouch. The castle they, they live in is, uh, Midnight Castle. Uh, did they, did they have a name for the pony they captured? Um, no, they don't, they don't mention his name at, at no point, but I, I had the, I had the, uh, the wiki around here, I had it the other day open and I closed it for some reason, maybe because I'm wrong. <laughs> but it, it, it does look like one of the original generation one toys. So yeah, even the design of the pony is very G1. This is a, this is a constant G1 callback to, uh, to everything that was in that two-parter or several pa- or, or, or one movie special. The conversation that they have here is, well, like you said, I'm powerful, yes you are, blah blah blah. Uh, but after T-Rex sees that there's a unicorn there and asks would he be, well, willing to teach him what he knows and Sendex says, maybe later when you're older. <laughs> And he has to go home because the bells are ringing. And it's, uh, it, and here he is finally, uh, they're finally going back home, arriving home. And this is a very weird scene to me, or at least the way that I am seeing it. Because you have, um, you have Queen Hayden and, and Borak, and King Borak talking in the, what seems to be like the dining room. Mm-hmm. And I love the way that they both are drawn and they are both, they are both presented. They are discussing, they are arguing, but they don't seem to have, um, they don't seem to overpower one or the other. They seem to be on the same level. And even though the king is, uh, tall, dominant with, um, with the, 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 what do you call what? The, the deer have on their hands. Antlers? I really forgot. Is it just antlers? Thank you. Yes. With the antlers and all that. Um, the way that the queen is presented, she is kind of like floating, the same way she looks very much like, uh, like Scorpion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But she seems to be on the same eye level that he does. Mm-hmm. The way that I see this, these guys are presented visually is that they are both on the same level, they are both on the same page. One is not more important than the other. I like mm-hmm. that. They look like both, they both look like good leaders. Yeah. And it doesn't vilify the character of uh, the, Tyrex's father. That's the thing. When I, when I first saw them, okay, like the intro of the book that we have here. And okay, I thought, okay, uh, T-Rex is this evil guy, blah, blah, blah. And Scorpion is just there along. And he's unfortunately, he's good, but unfortunately in a world of badness. But when we reach to the castle, oh, maybe he's father is one of those dictators who dictates the whole place and like grr, rules with an iron fist but no they're they're peaceful people and like they're normal kings and queens who cares a lot about relations with other nations and for the people of their kingdom and i was like what <laughs> but i find it very funny because you could very much put this as um this could very much be a scene out of a kid's version of Game of Thrones. <laughs> and then in walk T-Rex and his uh, dorky brother Scorpion <laughs> to break them, the, the, the atmosphere of the scene. Uh, but the, the thing is, okay, when, when I look at um, T-Rex's dad, uh, King Vorak, I, I can see why he's disappointed and always why put T-Rex under pressure because... They have high hopes for him. They see him as the next ruler of the kingdom. But uh, I don't know how he got into power. That was never told. Well, presumably there's a family bloodline. I mean, we kind of make that assumption when it's a monarchy. Yeah, but we got no idea how he got into power because we have to remember, if T-Rex was a good guy, he got into power the right way or the long game way where King Vendrick moved on and he has to take over the position of king but since he's an evil person he would have overthrown the king with violence and offed him off so which way did he choose well, when you yeah. co- when you when you contrast uh, uh Tirek to to his father it is clear that his father is a good leader and Tirek just wants power so there is that going for him and um that only gets more obvious when he sneaks 
uh, he sneaks out of the castle one night, only to try and absorb the power out of the unicorn that uh, Sendak had uh, kidnapped in his cave. But things don't work out well. So Tyrek not only is um, he's not only a despot, angry and quite a bit uh, <laughs> angsty, <laughs> but he's also he's also useless. I mean, he's so useless he manages to destroy the cave in the process. Causing, causing, a, uh, causing it to collapse and, uh, capture it, send, uh, capturing Sendak until, uh, uh, well, putting Sendak until, uh, un- under a, under a pillar of the cave. And he's such a useless guy that he just runs away. This guy is, <laughs> he's a moron. Just look at him, how immorally scary is he? Like, oh, I did something wrong. Run away! Run away! Get back here. <laughs> We try to read that in Scorpion's voice. Get over here! <laughs> uh. in, a, in this position right now, Tyrek is as useless as one of the stormtroopers from the Star Wars movies. What the no, hell? No, come on. That's not fair, man. That's not fair. Mm. The stormtroopers have better aim than him. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, this, as, as you can see, we basically breeze through, like, 10 or 15 pages of the entire comic. 19 or 18. It's it's impossible not to because you are told nothing new on this. It's an origin story that doesn't do much to flesh out the origins of the character. And so Tyrek is called to his dad because, "Uh you escaped with my car, you run away with my car and you crashed it. (laughs) Stupid kid. Oh, no, wait a minute, you did that last week. This week you tried to uh, absorb the magic powers of a unicorn and uh, and, uh, create, almost create an international conflict Uh, with Equestria and our land. But Pish, I hope you're happy. The spread for Pish 21. Take a look, see who's the consulate members of this empire. The imps and Discord. I know, Discord. What is Discord? I find that so revealing. Because if you remember in the, in the first part of, uh, Twilight's Kingdom, when Tirek meets with, meets with, uh, Discord, mm-hmm. they look like they already know each yeah, other. Like they're buddy buddies. Yeah. Because Tirek is like, Discord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like going, Oh my god, you guys haven't changed. <laughs> well, Discord may be immortal. Yeah, I mean, Discord, was he the Lord of Chaos or? He's the Lord of Chaos. What, what, yeah, come on. Uh, was it? Well, he calls himself the Spirit of Chaos. Mm, okay. Well, we have to, um, define it properly because in the com, in fandom, yes, he's the God of Chaos, Lord of Chaos, whatever it is, but in official canon, he could be something else. So, official canon is Spirit, right? I don't think so. The official canon is the TV show. This is second tier canon, so whatever we see in the comics doesn't actually have an impact on the TV show. But well, it doesn't matter. Next next page, just T T X that tells him that oh, you you, you created you guys and that's that crazy uh, Sendak. He is going to give us so much trouble. I'm gonna put him in prison, and you. You are grounded for the next three weeks. <laughs> no Nintendo 3DS for you. But dead. Now, now, there is one thing about T-Rex, the way he's drawn, is they're walking down the hallway to this summoning. He's sweating buckets. Oh, yes. And, he, and he's just insisting, I don't care. It is that teenager hiding behind the false apathy. <laughs> but And then he lies straight face to his father. But you're just like, dude, you're not fooling anybody with a tough guy act at this point. Yeah, you're, you're royally screwed. <laughs> Get it? Because you're getting screwed over by your dad, who's the king. That's right. But, yeah, the comic ends very abruptly, actually. It doesn't even say end. With Tyrek looking outside of his window, <laughs> wondering why, why the world is so unfair to him, and one day he will become an indomitable force. Yeah, right. And then... The weirdest thing happens because I don't know if this is happening to you on your comicsology uh, version of the comics, mm-hmm. but then we have five, mm-hmm. no, six pages mm-hmm. worth mm-hmm. of commercials. Five. Yeah, if you include the um, next issue, I don't. I include yeah. that. I include that. It's the. It's like, why do you have the need to put this on the digital uh, version? I can understand that in the print version because 
I mean, that's how comics no. work. But this is the digital version of the comic. Why you need to... No other comic has that. The reason why they do this is because it's a one-to-one replica of the physical issue. So whatever is in yeah, that... Yeah, but no other comic on the... No other comic on the Finship is Magic series has this. Nor on the other normal re- uh, normal uh, comics do. Yeah, I... Why do they have the need to put this there? I believe that with doing this, they kill the pacing of the comic because I'm guessing that they probably had something of like a limit of how many pages they need to write for and 23 so that other six more pages could have filled a lot of more details for T-Rex but in the end this is what we get Uh, it it says that you guys are talking about um the commercials, the advertisements in the comic more than the comic itself. <laughs> that, that's how unengaged we are. Now, I will say there is one element of Tyrick that we kind of brushed over. And which is? And maybe a, a criticism of his father. Uh, his wife says, you've always tried to ignore Tyrick's gift rather than, uh, than encourage it. Hmm. Apparently, Tyrick is the most magical centaur in the land. I guess he's the Twilight Sparkle. Very loose affiliation there. Um, well, I kind of see that affiliation, that affiliation working because they were on the same level towards the end of Twilight's Kingdom. So, I, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm ready to subscribe to that point of view. Yeah. He is the Twilight Sparkle of Sentinels. Okay, if that's the case, I'm going for that boat too because I'm holding, I'm grasping at straws right about now. And yeah. But, yeah, same here. And here's the thing, okay, with that in- uh, hang on, hang on, Norman, hang on. What were you going to say, Silver? Well, just that, when you're the only guy who has magic, this is not Equestria. Uh, it seems that in the Badlands, magic is rather sparse. And yet, ironically, they have a greater diversity than Equestria. Uh, he, I could understand if he felt left out or cut out, cut off from everyone else. There's that sense of isolation. When you're, I don't know, the smartest person in the room, the one who truly knows what's going on or feels like he has something that puts him above others, or just isolates them. You know those moments where you feel like you're alone in a crowd? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, God, yes, those. Those moments. Those are tough. But the problem is that never comes through in this comic. Tyrk is just angsty for the sake of angst. And you never get the sense that he's trying to reach out to others and just not finding a connection. Yeah, I I believe that when you said that he's the most magically inclined here, that never showed throughout the whole story until it is said. So f- for me, when he visited the, uh, who's this guy, um, uh, Sendark the Elder, I thought he was just like, I want, I like magic. Can you teach me magic? Ooh, pick a card. I guess with this, we're not saying that seeing the teenage years of the bad guy is not a good idea. I mean, come on, we we got through Star Wars episodes 1, 2, and 3 just to see Anakin Skywalker turn into Darth Vader. We have seen that. But when it comes to Tyrek, it will be like going through the time where Sauron was the... Who was a heartthrob in high school, and he had all the girls at at his feet. That will be that will be like that. It will be as jarring. This is as jarring. This is like finding out um, the the most shameful, disappointing part of the lives of the most evil overlord ever, <laughs> and not not being likable. And that is the thing: is that you don't feel nothing for Tyrek. You don't feel like, oh, this poor guy, oh, he was born in, in, in poverty or his parents hated him. It, it, if anything, it gives you the opposite idea. It shows Tyrek as how big of a spoiled brat he is. Yeah. Because his parents are actually kind of good people. They are and- careful. They don't want to have, in- they don't want to have conflict with Equestria and his mom seems to be a very loving mom. Mm-hmm. Very supportive when I did that too. Yeah, I mean, look at the way that he, she's hugging Scorpion, uh, halfway through the comic. There is a lot of emotion in that hug. I mean, she looks like a caring, uh, uh, floaty, thinny, whatever she is, I don't know. <laughs> what is she? We never established uh, that species. Gargoyle? Yeah, gargoyle. Gar- yes, yeah, I will say gargoyle. Yeah, it is a gargoyle. It says so in the wiki. But I, I'm, most intrigued by Scorpan in this. I mean, he follows around, he tries to keep the peace with his family. He's equal parts loving but fearful of his brother. I mean, there's that scene where 
Tyrick pretty much gags him with magic, and he's actually crying, so scared. Mm-hmm. I got it. Makes me curious. You know, did he, he doesn't seem to have any magic ability of his own. Did he go with Scorpan just to uh, sorry to, with Tyrick to Equestria just almost out of lapdog status? And did Star Swirl give him the courage to break away from his brother? I'm assuming that Star Swirl gave him the courage. And, well, if you see how Scorpion is treated in this story, he's never been treated with kindness or respect from his brother. And with how the show canon's telling us, um, the Star Swirl and uh, Scorpion have have bonded in a relationship where they have mutual understanding. No, I do like to see um, Scorpion's pendant uh, around his neck to see that potential last key of uh, of the chest of harmony, the the key that represents friendship. Mm-hmm. I always wonder why would Scorp- Scorpion give that to Tyrek? Um, I always took the impl- I always took the implication that. Scorpion, despite everything, everything horrible that Tyrek did when they went to, uh, to Equestria, Scorpion still loved his brother, so he wanted to give him something from him before walking away and going back to his lands after, uh, Tyrek was imprisoned in Tartarus. I took that from the TV show, not from this comic, but this comic cannot cement that the fact that in the end, Scorpion has always had, uh, an unconditional love for his brother. Um, the, the the love that only that only siblings can give to each other, and I like to take that from this is that this comic does a much better uh, job at portraying Scorpion as a likable character, likable and interesting character than it does to present Tyrek, the character that is supposed to be alive. <laughs> and I'm taking more I'm taking more out of every other character in this comic than out of Tyrek Tyrek himself. <sighs> so true, so true. In all honesty, I think that really sums up this whole thing. We're interested in the characters around Tyrek, but not Tyrek himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's we'd, we'd love to. I'd love to know how Scorpan. Apparently, he had to ascend the throne in Tyrek's absence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd love to know what kind of ruler he is. You know, that's that's something that many other uh, stories have the problem of. Not just this comic, but like I'm thinking of Django Unchained right now. If you guys haven't watched that movie, every single character in that movie is interesting except for Django. <laughs> so the one the one focus of the story is actually the the least interesting um character of them all. That's the same thing that happens in this comic. So guys, I, I want to ask you guys something. Like when T Rex and Scorpion came to Equestria and well tried to what you call this uh, take over the world, did was it a thousand years ago? Everything else was. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, actually, if <laughs> if Discord's chilling there, then it's at least a thousand years ago. Uh, okay. Yeah, because he's still around. He's still well. I will say it's even further than a thousand years ago, uh, because Discord is still there. He's not been turned to stone, and he's not in Equestria. Mm. So maybe this was even further further away, further behind. Because I'm thinking about this. Because if well, if Scorpion is taking over the Badlands. So how old is he and is he able to come and do a cameo in the episode? I would like to have that in the show. Well, if Tyrek is full grown into this uh, loud you know, juggernaut mm-hmm. in, in the Twilight's Kingdom, presumably Scorpion's grown up to where he's, a, he's more uh, adult as well, perhaps succeeded just by passage of time. Although, no one in this show ever seems to die of old age. <laughs> yeah. we, there, Sweetie Belle interrupted one funeral, <laughs> but that's it. I'm starting to think, and they barely have foals, like the, the foal population is microscopic. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, these ponies go on forever. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but anywho, final thoughts? Well, there's really nothing more to say, Mike. My, my part, I'm fascinated by what Scorpan would do afterwards. Maybe there was more to T-Rex if they, this was a multi-parter and this was just part one, but nothing's happened. Nothing really happened. I'm, I'm not invested, unfortunately. And James is right. This coming off of the uh, Sombra fiendship is magic where we were heavily 
invested and curious and, and talking about what it meant. This one, I think we're all kind of in agreement. It's just an angsty teen who's living a pretty privileged life comparatively. Mm, and yeah. he's still, and he's still unhappy. Yeah, he is loved by his parents, he has a good house, he has anything that he, ha- he can afford to break all of his brother's pony toys, by the way. Mm. But I'm, I'm sure. And still, he is like, oh, I live an unsatisfied life. I have more, I have more things than this other bad guy had, and still I want to become a bad guy. <sighs> Boring. Next. <sighs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, boring. Next, let's go to the next comic, yeah, shall we? Uh, for final thoughts, I, I I don't know what to say. It's yeah. Those are my final thoughts. My final thoughts is meh. Yeah. If you thought if you thought those are meh, where do we get to the next comic? <laughs> oh, dude, no. Next one is going to be anger. I can tell you that. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm already I'm already spoiling what I am going to say about about the next issue. But yeah, actually, let me open my comicsology app so I can tell you all the information about. Uh, the next issue, because we're going to be reviewing friend, friend, Friends Forever again. No, <laughs> no, I'm not going to make the mistake that I made in the in the previous one. We have been reviewing the Friends Forever comics for so long. I have Friends Forever in the mind. But the next comic is going to be Finship is Magic, issue number three. That is going to focus on the silence from Rainbow Rocks, which, if I recall correctly, is written by Ted Anderson with art by Agnes Garbowska. Yes. Going to be talking about that one, and let's see how long of a review that one is going to end up being. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, no, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Two, two pages. That's all. I said. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this one, even though it was a short one. I hope, and we will see you all in the next review. This has been James Cork, and I am Norman Sanso. Hey, yay, 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 hey, yay, yay. And that's he man, hey. actually. <laughs> <laughs> he man, hippogriff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am the hippogriff, I have the power of fan rage. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Bye bye.